Now to Berlin, which is soon to become home to something truly unique. Jews, Christians and Muslims are planning to build a house of worship there. One that brings a synagogue, a church and a mosque together under one roof. And I think they're calling it a Chirk Moskagog, I think, but I'll check with our guests on that one. The institution is known as the House of One and the new building, which will have its foundation stone laid, uh, I think next month or the middle of the year, will serve as a meeting place where worshippers and members of the public can come together and learn more about the religions and each other. I find it intriguing on a personal level, but also on a professional level. And so to hear more about what is planned, how it will work and what the hopes are for the future, we're joined now from Berlin by Roland Stolt, Protestant theologian and one of the founders of the House of One. Rabbi Andreas Nachama, historian, publicist and professor emeritus and member of the executive board of the Foundation House of One, and Imam Osman Ors, one of the theological consultants of the House of One. Uh, guten Morgen, guten Morgen, and thank you for your time. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. <laughs> first to you, Roland, when did the idea for the House of One first come about? Yes, thank you very much for the invitation. Um, Ten years ago, and Jews, Christians and Muslims from local congregations initiated this grassroots project. And together they started as placeholders for other religions and virtues, the process of building together this house. Um, it's a sacred building with a synagogue, a church and a mosque under one roof. You mentioned it. And it, I think it carries um, the richness and beauty of religious traditions into our time. And so, is it, okay. Yes, and is it dub? Is it being called a church a church mosque gog? <laughs> yeah, I think I read that somewhere. It, I think I read yeah, that you, somewhere. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, yes. Uh, it was called so. You can you can call it so. Um, it's <laughs> house of one, um, and the important the important point is that it's, that this is a. In, in, in a completely new, never built before architectural type. And so you can take, can take a new name for it. Ha. Yeah, so the House of One, is it the first of its kind? So you are saying it's the first in terms of, its, uh, in terms of, the, of the building, but is it the first of its kind in, in terms of bringing these three monotheistic religions together under one roof? Um, yes, in, in such a consequence of, of bringing it into architecture. Sure. So it's, 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 it's truly unique. Uh, Roland, what did the Berlin community and government think of the concept initially? Um, yes, um, for Berlin and also for the government, it was initially, um, I think, a surprise. Um, the fact that such a building is to be built in the center of, of, of Berlin, of this secular city, and uh, by the regions themselves, was, <laughs> was really surprising. Uh, what followed was uh, curiosity in the urban society, a curiosity what could develop from it and we could start a, a stimulating exchange in the recent years with theaters uh, universities and f a football club i think we can say that after 10 years <laughs> also one has arrived in society yes yes and did you that, did that then turn into strong support uh, yes um <laughs> after the first surprise uh, re received support from the state of Berlin and the government mm -hmm. and from many people who symbolically purchased a brick for 10 euros on our website. This, this is one point. And, and the second point is, uh, furthermore, uh, the House of One has become an international project. We have this reporting in 60 countries and note and today also in Australia. That's right. Uh, with partner projects in Central Africa, Georgia and Israel and this project ambassadors in, in, in 10 countries. And I think that's very important because a small movement um, is, is uh, raising and uh, a movement that should continue to grow. And um, in my opinion, the challenge, and the vision that, uh, is that uh, symbols of religious peace that are built and networked with another uh, emerge in different parts in the world. Mm. Maybe a house of fun in Australia in, in the future. And we work hard on it. And we are very happy about everyone who becomes part of this movement. And um, for me, it's, it's a very crucial point uh, that House of One is only as strong as the number of people involved. Yes. You mentioned 10 years it took. Uh, yes. Did you expect that it would take uh, that long? Did you expect maybe sooner or even maybe later? No, um, we had uh, intermediate steps for our project and, and every year was filled with work. 
and um, I think it, 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 everything made sense to to do it in this in this way. We had an architectural competition. We had the, the foundation of of our Stiftung House of One, and so every year was 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 uh, yeah. It made it made sense to have this um, intermediate steps to 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 develop our project. Very historical site, Roland. Archaeologists uh, have been working there. What is known about the first church on the site? Yes, um, the, the building place is important for our project. It's a symbolic place because it's a medieval birthplace of Berlin. There's a Petri Platz in the center of, of Berlin, and it's a place which shaped church life for 800 years. And uh, there were four Pet Petri churches, and the last one was damaged in, in World War II and uh, stood in ruins until it was demolished in 1962. And it was um, under the government of the GDR, the communist GDR, um, the last church um, um, was, was demolished. And um, after, after archaeological excavations in 2007 to 2009, um, it, it was a question. Uh, the question arose how the square should be redesigned and uh, whether a church should be built again. Mm. Uh, after 800 years with churches <laughs> in, on this place, and we decided then not just a church, but more. And the Christian community wanted to give space to the other religions and those who do not belong to any religion. And that was the, 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 the key moment of the project, um, that the Christian community took a step back and make way for others. Can you tell us about the architectural design? What's it going to look like? Yes, um, we had an architectural competition in 2012. <laughs> and... Um, with a worldwide recognition, and um, it was uh, Berlin architect who uh, won the, the competition. And uh, the building is, is, is a brick building, um, 46 meters high, and uh, built exactly on the foundations of the old St. Peter's Church. Um, there's an archaeological hall. Uh, there's uh, three sacred rooms, and the, in the middle is a great domed hall. And there's a city, city loggia, with the view of the center of the city. Um, that's, that's the structure of the building. In practical terms, uh, how can three religions, three different faiths, use the same space for worship? So how will services and other rituals be conducted? Yes, um, we can act in different spatial constellations because we have the, the, the different structure of the rooms. Mm. We have the sacred rooms, the three, and we have the central room in the, in the middle. And uh, so there we can there can be very specific and uh, common liturgical forms um, and we have to 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 work out it in the, for the future mm. but there are our imam and our rabbi are um, um, the better partner for your conversation to that point yes because it's making me think ramadan is uh, coming up next week and easter's just passed and then next year ramadan will go back 10 days and then we're going to have a clash easter will happen at the same time ramadan will happen at the same time <laughs> is there going to be room what are you going to do with the space <laughs> yeah it's a base for very interesting conversations, yes. <laughs> uh, Andreas, to you, uh, Berlin has such a horrific history in relation to the Jewish faith, be faith because of the Nazi regime. But uh, I see on your website one of your fellow rabbis, Rabbi Tovi ben Choren, has a video there. He says for him, as a Jew, it is the, it is the city of wounds and the city of miracles. Is that how you see it? Well, I could see it like that. I mean, he's a friend of mine, and he's a very inspiring uh, person. And um, yes, uh, I mean, if you, I'm a historian looking back to the past, but I'm looking back to the past for the sake of the future. So, mm. well, if you understand what happened in Berlin, how it is today, then you see what a miracle is. Uh, it's a completely different atmosphere than. Uh, 50, 70 or 80 years ago. Uh, there is no wall anymore. There is no uh, Nazism anymore. Mm. It's a new generation and a, a new city. And in this spirit, we come together, Muslims, Christians, Jews, as friends, fellows, as brothers and sisters, and build something. And uh, Rabbi Andreas Nachama, tell us about the Jewish uh, community, the Jewish population of Berlin, and the feeling about the House of One. 
Well, the Jewish population is comp- comparatively small. It's uh, around 10,000 registered members and probably another 10,000 Jews just living in Berlin. And uh, I mean, most of these people who uh, decide to live in Europe and in Berlin are uh, people who are uh, very much integrated into society and uh, also have a concept of an inclusive mm. uh, Jewish uh, community. So, yes, we are open. We discuss with our Christian and Muslim uh, brothers and sisters about uh, what concerns us all, <laughs> the future, the environment, yes. the uh, city as such. And as a matter of course, we also discuss what is in our hearts, and that is our faith. And we see that there are so many things that we share, as opposed to values what makes us that different. we share, and even though we see well, what is still be, be between us, mm. and uh, mm. we try to take it into our hands and to give an example set an example. Yes. If you've just tuned in, uh, you're with me, Serene Damaki, on ABC Radio's National Weekend Evenings. And uh, I am joined by Roland Stolt, Protestant theologian and one of the founders of the House of One. And the House of One is an, uh, is an institution that is, it's a new building that will be built in Berlin where Jews, Christians and Muslims uh, come together under the one roof. It brings a synagogue, a church and a mosque uh, together. And along with Roland Stolt, Stolt I am joined by Rabbi Andreas Nahama, historian, publicist, and member of the executive board of the Foundation of House of One, and Imam Osman Ors, one of the theological consultants of the House of One. Uh, and uh, Rabbi Andreas Nahama, how about the practicalities of ceremonies and services? Are you confident that the shared space will work? Well, there are three uh, um, uh, uh, rooms, three different sacred rooms. And uh, they can, I mean, can have parallel at the same time services and everyone uh, will not uh, be uh, linked to the other. I mean, we are in one building, yes, but uh, they are, we are separated. You have your areas. Though we are also together. Mm. Yeah, we have our, uh, our areas. We can uh, close the door behind it so no one will hear, hear the sound from the synagogue and the church or in the mosque. And... Uh, uh, so everyone can worship in his way, in his tradition. And even though we are united under one uh, roof, and we know uh, that maybe at the same time when we pray, uh, the uh, Muslim uh, brothers and sisters will, uh, are praying, all the uh, Christians mm, and are, you, are praying. And, you and have... maybe not. I mean, it's, it's not necessary. Yeah. And you do have that center from uh, what uh, Roland was uh, describing in terms of the design, almost symbolic in terms of the circle and how you come together. Yeah, well, then we come together, but probably we won't do that at times when uh, one of us is uh, celebrating a service. Fair enough. Before, you need... uh, after. I mean, that's, uh, we have 24 hours a day. So not necessarily you have to meet in the centre to do something together at the time at the, at the time when there's uh, praying time in one of the, our uh, rooms. Uh, to you, Imam Osman Ors, tell us about the Muslim, po- Muslim popula- population of uh, Berlin and uh, why the House of One might be of benefit to them. Um, yes, um, the Muslim population in Berlin actually is very diverse. On the one hand, um, there are congregations and denominations mm. from dif- with different cultural backgrounds, um, almost one out of ten in Berlin right now, like as the statistics say, are Muslim. Uh, it's actually more than than the average in Germany. Mm. Um, yeah, and and yeah, and I see um, like 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 the um, the Muslim population in Berlin has, of course, every congregation, every. Uh, mosque, I, I would say, has its or every community has its own challenges, and and we have also have challenges uh, which we all kind of uh, share. How important do you see this sort of space as a way of overcoming differences in belief? And um, um, I believe um, Rabbi Andreas I, was uh, talking to that as well, uh, talking about that as well. Uh, I mean, the House of One is not 
built to overcome the differences in belief, I would say. It is more uh, to, to be able and to encounter the differences we have. The differences we have are an enrichment. And for me, I would say, as also God states in the Holy Quran, it is, is, it is his own will, uh, as he describes in Surah 49, verse 13, that he created us in diversity, in different nations and tribes, and uh, just that we get to know each other, he says. So there is a... Uh, heavenly call, if you will, or uh, God's will, that we um, encounter uh, the richness He created, and to respect the the richness He created within our diversity. And therefore, um, the House of One is a place where this different um, colors of traditions, colors of religions, will be visible and not only visible, but also you will uh, see it, you can uh, hear it, and you can feel it, how it is lived. Uh, and that is something we, will, we, want, to, we want to, of course, um, yeah, make secure. Or, um, and we don't want to kind of mix something up and uh, to overcome the differences in a sense of uh, making up a new religion. That's, mm -hmm. that's something we are very uh, aware and sensitive of. And are those some of the things that uh, some in the community were skeptical about that this was that this as a result of this new building that may occur? Is that where some of the skepticism was? There is al always uh, some kind of skepticism. Skepticism, of course, towards mm. I would say people um, have, of course, and it's natural to have a kind of fear of losing their own identity or mixing up religions, etc., of course, uh, that's that's kind of normal. But if, if we approach other Muslims, especially other Muslims, and explain them how the House of One is constructed, how the sacred spaces are apart from each other, mm. and how we are going to live our religion uh, within the House of One, yes. with respect to each other, then um, there's a lot of confirmation and support also within the Muslim community in Berlin. I mean, last um, time, just a couple of months ago, we had uh, a prayer, a multi-faith prayer, we call it, um, due to the terrorist attack um, in, 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 in Hanau we had last year, last year. And we came together, people of different faiths, and prayed for peace and for reconciliation. And there were Actually, uh, for the first time, um, six different Muslim uh, congregations and denominations mm. represented uh, within this prayer. And that's something we can build on. And I am very hopeful that and confident uh, that the support within the Muslim community in Berlin will also grow in the coming years. Do you see this idea spreading beyond Berlin, um, Imam Osman Ors? Do you think we might one day see this sort of institution in other countries, in Islamic countries? For sure, definitely. I, I will say, I mean, um, we are already in, in contact and in touch with different countries, like Roland mentioned it, like the Central African Republic in Israel. We had, uh, it, <laughs> that was really great, we had a delegation from Iraq, uh, one month and then another month we had a, con uh, a delegation from Iran, actually, theologians, men and women with, the, with whom we um, discussed mm. the House of One. And, um, and they were really uh, very, very hopeful and very um, uh, happy about the project. And all what they said is they also wished and hoped uh, in some kind that this house or this house in a different manner, maybe, uh, would also be built in their countries. And therefore, I see, and we see when we look around, like in the Emirates, for instance, in Abu Dhabi, there is a project uh, like the Abrahamic uh, House, mm -hmm. which is going to be built, and um, in other countries, Muslim countries also, I see that there's more and more... Um, more and more um, acceptance <laughs> mm. of, 
of dialogue. Mm. Yeah, I think the, 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 the importance of dialogue is there is a growing awareness of that and responsibility we have um, to encounter the other and to build bridges. That's yeah. important, I would say. We have to be we, it's in, within our responsibility to build bridges, cultural bridges, bridges of friendship and bridge of, bridges of brotherhood and sisterhood within uh, thoughts, thoughts mankind for our children and for our future. It's a beautiful the sentiment indeed. And Roland, this is open also to other faiths, not just uh, the three monotheistic faiths and also agnostics and also atheists. And Is that right? Yes, yes. it's very important for the project and the, the idea. It's not uh, only the religions, but the, the sceptical, the atheists uh, are part of the, of the project too. So the foundation stone of the House of One in Berlin will be laid at a ceremony on the 27th of May. Is that right? So next month? Yes, it's right. Yeah. That's a bit exciting. <laughs> it must be for you, yes. 10 years. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, it's very exciting. And then we will start building and um, the building period uh, will be four years and then we will we will open the house. Uh, so it will open, open, the, open to the public in about four years' time, God willing. Correct. <laughs> You well, are invited. I was about to say, yay, <laughs> because I would have to go. I would absolutely love to go. Um, I don't know. I'm thinking because I'm of um, Muslim background and my, my husband and his family are uh, of uh, Christian background. So this is perfect for us. We've got, you know, I'm thinking our 20th marriage anniversary. We might head to Berlin and, uh, I don't know, renew vows or have a ceremony under the roof, uh, the, the, that in, under the, that roof of the House of One. Does that sound like something we could do? <laughs> Yes, you have to get a special invitation. <laughs> excellent, excellent. We will keep in touch. Uh, Roland Stolt, Rabbi Andreas Nahama and uh, Imam Osman Ors, thank you uh, for talking to me. All the best with the project. I will be watching it very closely. And uh, fingers crossed, international borders do open up. I can make my way in a few few years' time. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Roland Stolt, Protestant theologian and one of the founders of the House of One. Also there, Rabbi Andreas Nahama, historian, publicist and member of the executive board of the Foundation House of One and Imam Osman Ors, one of the theological consultants of the House of One. Now to Berlin, which is soon to become home to something truly unique. Jews... Christians and Muslims are planning to build a house of worship there, one that brings a synagogue, a church and a mosque together under one roof. And I think they're calling it a Chirk Moskagog, I think, but I'll check with our guests on that one. The institution is known as the House of One and the new building, which will have its foundation stone laid, uh, I think next month or the middle of the year, will serve as a meeting place where worshippers and members of the public can come together and learn more about the religions and each other. I find it intriguing on a personal level, but also on a professional level. And so to hear more about what is planned, how it will work and what the hopes are for the future, we're joined...